What's going on, everybody? It is that time again for another episode of the Beco System. What is the Beco System, right? So check this out. It is technically the black and brown ecosystem. And this show today is really focused on startup founders. We focus on technologists and the ecosystem itself that we're establishing as individuals that are that have companies that are looking to do different things and are supporters of the of the actual ecosystem as well. Uh, otherwise known as ESOs, those are entrepreneur support organizations. And what we want to do is we want to bring and showcase and highlight those that are actually in this space and those that want to be in this space to have a platform where you can listen, you can learn, you can get engaged and get involved. I'm coming to you all live today. We are sponsored by Venture Suite, Color Coder Labs, Venture Combine 1921, and Black Hack. So behind me, you all can see I have my virtual backdrop of Venture Suite, which is a black owned co-working space for black and brown startup founders and the entire community, okay? So we wanna make sure you all know about that. That is actually in Columbus, Ohio. It will be opening late this spring and we will keep you all posted on that. But with that being said, for those that are new to this show, this is columbusblack.com's uh, Beco system. And basically we've been around for almost 16 years It's columbusblack.com. We are an omni-channel platform providing commerce and culture, connecting the black community to commerce and culture to make sure that they're abreast of what's going on. The commerce side is business, which is a big part of what we're talking about today. The culture side is entertainment, right? So we do entertainment. Um, you all have heard us, uh, seen us out at mu uh, multiple events over the 15 year period. And then recently y'all seen us introduce an entertainment platform by the name of MILE, which stands for Make Your Life Entertaining to literally ensure that you all are entertained and that's our sister company. But with that being said, this is no longer about me. This is not about Columbus Black at this point, but this is about the what? The BECO system and our panelists that are here to join us today. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over and I'm going to introduce our panelists. Uh, we actually have with us today, Kena Smith. Uh, Kena, I'm gonna actually allow you to do your full intro so that I do not jack it up, but we are excited to have you here uh, as the CEO of uh, WCEO, but I'll let you explain that for everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to you, uh, Kevin. Good morning to uh, all these uh, wonderful panelists that I'm honored to be um, on uh, with this morning, and of course, your audience. I am Kina Smith. I am a social entrepreneur and an ecosystem builder. I am the CEO of the Women's Center for Economic Opportunity, which is a 501c3, uh, as Kevin mentioned, entrepreneurial support organization. So you'll hear us talk about uh, ESO throughout the conversation. Uh, we provide and serve um, uh, Black women and other diverse uh, women business owners and innovators and the way that we serve them is through providing them with pathways to capital, connections, and business know-how. We are uh, uh, about eight years old now, and uh, we are working on uh, our big project right now is a women's business accelerator for pandemic recovery that we are calling Hire One. And I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that as we uh, go through the program. And so um, I will leave it there and say thank you for having me this morning. I'm excited to be here and excited for this conversation. Outstanding. I look forward to hearing about Hire One as well. So thank you, Kina, for that introduction. Let's move on to Doug McCullough, CEO of Color Coda Labs. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Doug McCullough, CEO of Color Coded Labs. Color Coded Labs is uh, a tech and software developer boot camp, 16 weeks, where we are helping people from historically marginalized communities and overlooked talent uh, raise their income, essentially learn a technology skill that has demand in the marketplace and teach them some of the skills necessary for them to succeed in, in a new space. We are raising incomes and uh, supplying talent to an industry that is desperate for it. That is the technology industry, which says it needs people and says it wants diversity. And so here we are with diverse people, with talented, you know, uh, with technology talent. So that's our mission. Uh, I come to the world also as a co-founder of Black Tech Columbus, which is creates an authentic space for Black technology professionals to connect 
collaborate and create. I know almost everybody on this call, part of the Columbus tech community, and we're all kind of mixed up together in, in trying to make things better for people of color and our communities uh, in central Ohio. That's it for me, that's my intro. All right, good, and a, and a great one. We appreciate having you on today, Doug, and congratulations uh, on Color Coded Labs and obviously all that you've done with uh, Black Tech Columbus as well. Let's move on to Maurice Womack, uh, CEO of Wakanda. All right, so Maurice, welcome. I'm glad that we can have you on the show. Please introduce yourself to the audience. Thank you, thank you. Um, my name is Maurice Womack. I'm the founder of Wakanda. So Wakanda is a community learning platform where black experts share their knowledge via live learning events. And so yeah, we have both the community and the learning piece together, which if you've ever learned anything, you need those components to be successful. And so um, not only the learning, but the community. And so we're, we're really building a platform where people can come together, uh, learn uh, not only in the live events, but even after the fact where you can do deeper learning. Um, my background is I'm an engineer. I'm also a STEM equity specialist. So uh, prior to Wakanda, uh, I had a company called Oasis, which was opening access to STEAM in informal settings. So we partnered with the dish school district. Uh, we were at LeBron's I Promise School as well. Uh, really the goal was to expose as many youth from marginalized communities, underserved communities to quality STEM learning. And so that's a precursor to a lot of what you get to now in technology, right? So having a, a solid technology foundation and understanding so that you can move into creating your own technology companies uh, and make that path a little bit easier. So excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Outstanding, Maurice. We're excited to have you here. And I know you have a breadth of knowledge and experience to bring to the table today as well. And with that being said, let's transition over to Will Burris, who's the uh, chief problem solver for Modern Technologies. Absolutely. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Will Burris. I am a, uh, my, my LinkedIn says that I'm a visionary technology executive and entrepreneur, but the truth is uh, I'm a college dropout who got into a Microsoft boot camp 25 years ago and was able to turn that into a really uh, successful career in technology. So uh, those things are real. If you're interested in getting involved, do it. Uh, I've, I'm currently actually the chief technology officer of Lower.com, which is one of the fastest growing fintechs in the country. It's did about 1.7 billion in loan volume and scaling and hiring like a weed. Uh, but I'm also, uh, I have a consulting firm called Modern Technologies that I've had in many iterations over the last couple of years, uh, which is uh, my vehicle for problem solving in a tech space built on this thesis that uh, every time that you see the way that people use technology change, there's great opportunities for entrepreneurship because you can take old business models and translate them into a new technology stack. So uh, the most recent one I did that was an offshoot of that was called Immersive Is, uh, which was a virtual reality content creation company. Uh, that's a passion of mine. Uh, I just finished a really awesome shooting range project with the police department. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I've done that. Uh, I also have another company called Labor Genome, uh, which allows me to explore uh, how developmental psychology can be used to help match people to work, match people to jobs, and just create better awareness of how you can um, uh, how you can build a better life for yourself, to be honest. Uh, I've also done some startups in the music business and just been around uh, for quite a while. Thank you, Will. We're, we're definitely excited to have you here on the show. Obviously, we've had many conversations about what we'll end up talking about some today. So appreciate you uh, taking the time and being able to join us as well. And with that being said, I want to uh, wrap up with our final panelist, Shanice Wallace, who is the CEO of the Lotus Foundation. So Shanice, would you introduce yourself to our audience as well? Uh, hello, everybody, and thank you for having me today. Uh, as uh, Kevin said, I am Shanice Wallace. I am the CEO of Lotus Foundation. Uh, Incorporation. We are a 501c3 registered uh, public charity platform uh, with the uh, subclassification of crowdsourcing. Um, my original background, <laughs> which shocks everybody, I am a licensed hairstylist of 10 years and a salon suite owner in the heart of the city of Atlanta. I also own um, an event space 
So that's my main background. Uh, but the crowdsourcing platform is my new baby. Uh, we've been launched for about a month. Um, and what we do here is uh, we have a unique fundraising model that is patent pending. Um, and it's considered a novel patent. Um, and we also provide uh, resources to the disenfranchised communities, especially right now with the pandemic. So we offer uh, employment. We've partnered with a few people that um, have been able to secure jobs, uh, remote jobs, uh, health and wellness benefits, uh, discounts, perks, um, financial education, literacy, um, I mean, the list goes on as far as uh, what we have here on our platform. Uh, so I'm still a baby in the game, uh, still learning the fintech world. Uh, like I said, this is not my main, you know, that wasn't my main background, but I'm here and I, I have a new niche now. Just being able to uh, bring everybody to one hub to help them enhance their life and build generational wealth, because essentially that's what we need. Outstanding, <laughs> outstanding. So, so thank you and welcome to the to the call, Shanice, uh, and for all that you're doing, especially down in Atlanta, making sure everybody looks beautiful. One, but then also that they have money in their pockets, right? So, number two. So, we appreciate that. Now, let's swing back because Shanice kind of gave us a segue into her why, right? Like what she's actually doing. Um, and we're going to swing back the other way. Well, we're going to come back to you as we think about how did you end up because it's all about the story, right? How did you end up doing what you're doing? Like, what's your what was your motivation even to get into tech? Like, how did you even get into it and then get tied to the ecosystem? Well, that's interesting. Because a lot of people ask me that question. Like, how did you go from hairstyling to a fintech app? Well, my main goal was to uh, be able to create um, a, a, a mixed use development. And this mixed use development was going to be similar to what's out here in Atlanta. We call it Atlantic Station. And it's work, live, play. There's hotels, businesses, um, you know, food, entertainment, everything all in one. But it wasn't built by us. So I wanted to see what we can do um, as a collective and building, bringing businesses together. Um, I was looking into 36 acres of land. I've spoken to developers who built the Atlanta airport. I mean, I've had all types of resources, but then it was like, okay, well, where's the capital? You know, everybody's asking me, well, how are you mm -hmm. going to raise money? So I'm like, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just a hair style salon swing order and that does well, but I need money. So I got introduced to a traditional like Susu platform, um, and I was going to use that to be able to build some capital for land acquisition and I guess, you know, start my master plan for my uh, business for, for the mixed use development, which is called the 11. And it kind of took a course. Uh, it, it started there. Then I realized the model was unsustainable. So yes, I did well, but then the people that I brought in along behind me didn't do well. So it's been a drastic change. I had to change the narrative of um, the way we cycle money. And uh, it, it went from that to building an app that in creating an algorithm, working with mathematicians to create a sustainable uh, ratio and algorithm to be able to allow this ecosystem, this financial ecosystem to continue to last uh, for generations to come. So that's kind of how hmm. I pushed off into it. And now I'm kind of like knee deep. <laughs> okay. I, I okay. haven't deviated from the, the main goal, which is still to attain the land and develop this mixed use development that's all black owned, black and brown owned and black and brown, brown ran. So okay. uh, that's pretty much how I, I got into this. <laughs> Outstanding. So thank you for sharing that, that why and how it all happened. Now, I, I could tell you right now, now earlier, I saw Keena shaking her head, but I know when you said algorithm, everybody else was like, absolutely, right? So, Will, that's a great segue <laughs> into you and how you got into tech, because when it comes to algorithms, that's like your niche, right? So in itself, walk us through your why and how'd you end up doing what you're doing? What, what got you here? Yeah, I, you know, I, I actually stumbled into tech, I like to say. I really wasn't seeking it out. You know, when I was growing up, I was always into computers and whatnot, but my passion was music. So I, uh, I was in the music business prior to my technology life and, uh, you know, flushed out of it because it's organized crime at the end of the day. And, uh, and then found myself trying to figure out what to do. And my brother, who was managing me at the time, was like, hey, you can go take these tests that Microsoft is offering and get really good jobs, right? This was in the uh, late 90s. And uh, mm -hmm. so I took 
you know, 700 tests, 700 tests, seven, seven tests, spent 125 bucks each test to uh, get in and got a job building laptops and just ran with it. And I think uh, I was fortunate in 2000 to start a company uh, with uh, a, a friend of mine, uh, you know, it was six of us and $750,000 and we got this business up and running. And I think the power of sitting in this empty office and building out, you know, your own thing uh, was just sticky. So from there, mm. I found freedom in that and power in that and started building my own product oh. and uh, running, you know, and so over, um, you know, the last 20 years, it's just been a progressive, you know, we were talking about failure uh, or right before we got started. It's been progressive, what I call graceful failures, right? Because those are the mm. best learning opportunities. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I, you know, did the music thing, learned a lot through that journey about how to pitch, how uh, not to talk about the technology, uh, then decided to go into pure technology, started developing algorithms. That's where my passion is, landed on labor genome, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, it's just been kind of this progressive journey of unpacking and peeling and playing different roles uh, to realize, you know, what role I'm really good at, what role I'm not. And honestly, how to execute, you know, to form my thesis on how to execute, because at the end of the day, that's that's really all there is okay. to it. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, hey, listen, y'all. Now, this is the thing about Will, right? Like, you'll listen to Will, and he'll like be dropping gems, and you won't even pick up on them if you just listen, right? So, just going back a little bit, you talked about failure, right? You dropped something that's really important in there for, especially for founders. And I saw some head nods because I think we we really get that piece, right? You talked about not like doing the pitch, not pitching the technology. Like, I don't know if everybody paid attention to what you said and what that really means. Like, what do you pitch then if it's not the technology? And then you land it with execution on the end. Yeah. So he's just dropping these major gems subtly. And I think the thing is because I've been around him and so many others have been through so much, we gotta go back for one quick second, right? Real fast. So what did you mean by those those three things, right? You talked about the, the failure piece, break that down just a little bit more real fast, then talk about, obviously you wanna wrap up with the execution piece of why that's so important, but what do you mean by the pitch piece and not pitching I'll, I'll tell it in the form of two quick stories. The, the pitch piece, I had this startup in 2004 called Tap It. It was an online music distribution engine and it blew up. It was West Coast based, my partner. Uh, we got on CNBC, we pitched this thing. There was only 11 music engines in there at the time that I can remember. And we were one of the only ones that was doing independent music. So I got in front of a lot of people really fast. It grew really quickly. I was in a room with uh, Brandy's boyfriend at the time, who was a really hot producer and, a, and an artist named Nairi All Day, who was awesome. And I was pitching them on this technology that I built. Now at the time I was a technology guy. So I'm trying to sell them on how awesome my engine is because it was web-based. And back then you had to download iTunes, you had to download Rhapsody, but I could still burn CDs through this ActiveX control. And, you know, it looked like an app, although you didn't have to actually install it. And I was thought I was killing this pitch, right? Because I knew that technology was legit. And I walked out and got cussed out by my partner, like, please stop, you know. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I murdered that, you know. <laughs> and he's like, nobody in that room had a clue what you were talking about, you know, because I was just all on the technology. And that wasn't the value proposition. They didn't really care. You know what I mean? What it, what it was. Mm. Um, so that was a big learning for me. Uh, um, it, it was also funny. I had a big learning Ooh. out of that one too, to um, just build enough to get it out there and don't gratuitously iterate on your product. When we pitched that on CNBC, I crashed it on CNBC Ooh. because I was hacking on the code literally until we got into the studio. So, you know, pick a good build and stop. But, uh, but yeah, I actually went and um, took Dang. a job in an advertising firm afterwards because I realized I wanted to learn how a customer perceives technology. Um, and, and that helped me to learn how to pitch. So when I pitch, I don't pitch the tech. I pitch the value, right? This is, this is how I'm going to save you money. Um, you know, uh, and, and in that way, you, we can back into how I'm going to do it. But really what you want to know is why do I want to buy your product over somebody else? So that was a big learning for me. Um, the execution piece is the other side of the fence. You know, I've done this seven times and uh, I've made money along the way, but I never really hit the goal that I wanted. And, you know, I've, I've gone into jobs to study people, right? So to watch 
the, the entrepreneur, the CEO that I'm working for and really study how they do things. So I've, I've been blessed to get to work with some really powerful entrepreneurs that are growing massive companies. And after all these years, the one thing I've really come to realize is it all comes down to execution. You know what I mean? Like um, it's easy to get caught up in a funding loop or to pitch the passion of what it is that you're doing. But unless you can go out there and make some money, uh, at the end of the day, you are you are going to struggle, right? So, um, you know, I, I like to challenge everybody, go out and try to support yourself on this business, you know what I mean? Because that will empower you, right? The, the process that you need when you have to pay your bills or you have to keep your wife, you know, from killing you, uh, you know, that will teach you how to be very efficient, right? How to really dial into whatever it is that you're trying to execute and how to get that generating revenue, in such a way that sustains you. And once you get to that point, all of the money and the investment and the scale uh, becomes a lot easier, right? So it took me a long time to figure that out, right? Um, but that's that's really, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah. Dropping powerful, heavy gems. Y'all y'all have to just listen. And he's actually been through it, all right. So y'all got to pay attention to that. And man, that's powerful. So thank you for sharing that. So we're gonna swing it back. So. Maurice, obviously you've experienced a lot of this as well, right? Trying to figure all this stuff out and continue to plow through. So would you share your why and how did you end up where you are also? Yeah, for me, man, this started, uh, actually, I'm a mechanical engineer by background. And so we don't, we do a lot of things offline. So at the time, when I first started, I was at Battelle. I was working an engineer. We did a lot of stuff for the, for the, uh, for the government. Um, but I was also getting my MBA. And as part of that, um, they made us subscribe to a magazine called Business Week. And on the, on the cover of Business Week on one of the magazines was a, a gentleman named Kevin Rose. I don't know if you remember him, he, he founded dig.com. And the title was like how he went from zero to $60 million in 18 months. And I read that article and I was like, man, I was like, I need something on the web. So at that point, you know, mm. again, mechanical engineer, not really involved with, with technology on the web. I told myself I need to build something on the web that's scalable, that people can access from anywhere. And so ever since then, I've been building things on the web, right? So, and then that evolved into how do I use technology to solve problems in my community? So um, Keena had said she was a social entrepreneur, right? So I kind of consider myself that because all of my business ventures have connected technology to problems in the communities that I care about, right? And so. So Wakanda is the next iteration of that, right? Targeted toward African-Americans, um, using things like this idea of learning, like a constant lifelong learner, that we have to be that, right? And so that's kind of what Wakanda was born out of. And then along with Oasis, is this idea of like creating a pipeline into uh, technology jobs and so on and so forth. And so that's really been my journey uh, using, and again, I'm working on something else kind of in the background that utilizes technology to solve the problems of our communities. And so uh, I've kind of evolved, like um, like Will has said, I don't call myself an entrepreneur, I call myself an executioner. Because if, you, if you've gone through this, it really, that's what separates the people who are successful and those who aren't, your ability to execute, right? And so as you go through that process, that cycle, you learn so much more, you learn what not to do, you learn how to think, right? Um, when you're pitching, what are you pitching? Like, like Will said, don't pitch the technology, pitch the problem that you're solving for, right? And why you can provide that, why you can execute on that. And so when you go into these pitch meetings, that's really what they want to understand. Why are you the person to solve this problem? And why should we give you any money to continue to do that, right? And so, and I'm also of the same mindset that now, again, when I first started out, uh, I was telling them beforehand, that uh, you know, I had applied to Tech Columbus. This is Rev One uh, version 1.5, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but you know, I had went and I had an idea, and it was like, okay. But now I've evolved to like never go to someone with just an idea. You have to get it at least to where it's a prototype or something that people can feel and touch and test and validate, right? Um, everything is an experiment. Meaning like, again, if you're saying that this is what you believe people will do, the consumer will do, you have to at least test that thesis and get some traction on that level before you go to somebody and say, hey, I want some money for this, right? So that's step number one, prove that you can get to 
to, to step one first with a simple prototype, proving your, your thesis, and then everything else will start to fall into place. So I've run into so many people who've said like, hey man, I, I gotta get it to where it, it's flashy, it does all these things, and it's like, no, you, you're doing too much. Pick one thing, prove your basic thesis, and then move on and everything else will become a lot easier. So once again, powerful gems being dropped left and right. I'm gonna tell you right now, right? Because I've been there. Somebody needs to hear everything that y'all are saying. Like somebody right now is gonna take the wrong step, waste time, energy, and money if they don't hear and apply what is being said and dropped here. People pay attention, it's for real, all right? And then execute. With that being said, Doug, we're coming back to you and Akina, we're on our way up to you. So Doug, how did you end up where you are doing what you're doing? Tell us the, what's the backstory? Fill us in. You know, I often ask myself the same question. I'm still trying to figure out how did I get here doing this? Uh, but I have <laughs> some similarities to all of you and I have some similarities to Will. I was a musician and I had two kids. I was living in New Jersey and I needed a better income. I needed a better lifestyle. I needed uh, to change. I needed a better future. I mm. came back to Ohio, mm. went to University of Toledo, got an undergraduate degree in uh information systems and operations management, wound up at Lucid Technologies here in Columbus over on Broad Street. Some of you guys remember it. They are now Alcatel Lucent, but uh, that is the where Bell Labs was in uh, Columbus. And I, I sat and looked at a whole bunch of PhDs and extremely smart software developers, and I learned about the telecommunications industry. And then I went into government. <laughs> so I went into state government. Uh, first, I got my MBA. Uh, but, uh, and I had some similar experiences to Maurice, uh, similar experiences where you're seeing things that you would not necessarily have seen if you didn't get inside that circle. Uh, I've been working in state government for a long time and I'm not that great of a technologist, but I am a good technology manager. I'm a good manager and I'm a good strategist and thinker. Um, I, I wound up in four different state agencies and then I went to a municipality, which was Richmond, Virginia. I directed IT there, and then I was recruited back to Ohio to the city of Dublin, where I was a chief information officer. And I mention this because I've been a CIO for a long time. A couple of things happened that, uh, that pushed me over in this direction. I think it was 2018. There's a very big event here in Columbus called CIO Tomorrow, and all of the, the CIOs from the largest organization formed the CIO Forum, and they asked me to be the chairperson of that event. It takes about a year of planning for it, but I had a lot of influence and I decided to influence that event to talking about talent and diverse talent at that time. And it wound up having some incredible uh, presentations from a lot of interesting people from different companies around town that I then got to meet. And I wound up having this conversation about talent. And I realized that we are broken when it comes to this conversation. We're just not connecting mm. the dots properly. And, and, uh, since that time, I've been asked to speak on the topic, and this is before co-founding Black Tech Columbus. Um, I know a lot of people are very successful in technology, Black people. And I know a lot of people who are looking for something to do and trying to find a way to get that income, like I was when I was a struggling musician with two kids. I now have four kids, and I found that technology was a career field that built a bridge for me. And I feel very strongly about this. And so... There's been a lot of other things that have happened, but when I got the opportunity to work with Color Coded Labs, um, you know, something happens to some of us who speak on panels and who advocate for some of this stuff. Uh, at some point, you have to roll up your sleeves, put your own money on the line, put your own time on the line, mm. and build a business oh. that's going to do that Ooh. thing, right? You, I, mm. I, I've spoken, I've been on stage, I've written articles, I do podcasts. But at some point, you got to get in a room with a bunch of other people and build a product. And as Will says, you know, you got to go make some money on this. Not because you're necessarily looking for the money. You could get a job that's going to give you the money, but because you need to solve the broken problem and the opportunity is there. And we have a society and a business environment and an ecosystem which is broken. It is a broken pipeline. It is unsuccessful at finding diverse talent and putting it to work. Mm. And, mm. and and that's a market opportunity. So yeah, I'm doing a lot of other things, but that's how I come to be here. And, and like Will and like Maurice and like you, Kevin, I, I'm doing two or three other companies as well. 
one other thing that I wanted to do, I recognize I love being a chief information officer, but I recognize that I have the capacity to be a chief executive officer. And I was wasting some talent. And, and sometimes you've got to pivot away from what you've been doing and you've got to go ahead and take that on. And a lot of us feel inferior and have that imposter syndrome and feel like, well, I'm not really a CEO type. Yeah, you are. Uh, we, we are very mm. resilient mm. and gritty people and we are capable of being CEOs and we need to learn how to do that and step up so that we can build the market, not necessarily for ourselves, but it's going to allow other people to build generational wealth. I resonate a whole lot with what Shanice is talking about there. She's solving a problem that is not really her problem. She just sees it and said, well, we need to just do this thing over here. And then she brings leadership into that effort for all of us, not for her. <laughs> she has a successful mm. business. She's good. You know, yeah. she's building something for the rest of us. So, you know, I, I think that's where the secret sauce is. You know, I don't know. And Keen, I know you're going to bring it to I, I just I don't know how many mic drops and gem drops we could have like a one call, one session. But it's a lot, y'all. So y'all keep seeing me doing these. Doug, thank you for sharing that, especially so transparently. It's so heavy. It, I mean, it tugs my heart. Many don't know, but I had a 25-year career as an executive in retail. And that tug and that pull to do, to just really take that leap, but to do what you know you're supposed to be doing to change other people's lives and have that impact, to, to create that legacy while you're alive, that's powerful, right? And, and and yes, we have the ability. We are brilliant people. So thank you for dropping that. And, and by the way, Maurice, I know you got brilliant all over Wakanda so people can see that too. Like we're speaking the same language. And Kina, that has to be a great segue for you uh, with what you have going on. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. How and why did you get here? <laughs> well, before I get started on why and how I'm here, I just wanna say that it's a blessing to be here and to hear all of this black excellence and black genius and the vision of all of you all, right? Um, uh, Shanice and a vision for a mixed use development on 36 acres of land uh, is so incredible and powerful, right? Uh, Will and his technical genius and uh, Maurice uh, with Wakanda and Doug, um, you know, talking about how he's using, we all have this zone of genius, right? That um, if we are uh, privileged and blessed, blessed enough, then we're able to operate within it and be able to uh, move ourselves. Sometimes we have to move away from something um, in order to take that leap of faith um, uh, to really work in it. And it's hard work, right? It's not easy. It's tough. It is um, back breaking, uh, soul shaking work that, um, uh, but if you stick with it, um, mm. it is so rewarding, right? So, I mean, it takes me back kind of to my um, uh, reason for uh, creating the Women's Center for Economic Opportunity. Um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a young girl, I was a, 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 a read all the time. And my mother um, always gave me tons of books about uh, uh, heroic Black women. And so I grew up on stories of uh, Harriet Tubman and uh, Phyllis Wheatley, Mary McLeod Bethune. And if you know the history of those women, you know that they were extraordinary um, mm -hmm. um, and prolific in the things that they accomplished. Uh, when I got to high school, um, I uh, learned that Black women were actually the low people on the socioeconomic uh, ladder, right? Which was um, a lot of emotions in that, right? Um, mm -hmm. I felt uh, uh, angry um, about that because that is not, you know, what I knew of Black women. Um, and so I was determined that uh, through uh, the rest of my life that I was going to be lifting up Black women um, to what I knew that uh, our, our, our genius, our uh, beauty, our power um, um, was doing in this world um, without the recognition um, that was so uh, richly deserved. And so um, 
uh, I, 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 all through uh, high school, all through college, um, I got a master's from uh, the was now the John Glenn School in public administration because I thought that um, policy and politics uh, was the way to make uh, these advancements. Right, I grew up in the '70s, and you know we had all you know every time we turn on television, it was all about the lawyers and the politicians and. Uh, you know, we went through the Nixon thing and, you know, we saw, you know, um, uh, 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 our first black woman run for president. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so it's all of these kinds of milestones uh, for uh, black women. Um, and in my own little way, I was um, uh, making inroads and, and, and keeping us um, at the front of the agenda. So I had the privilege of working in the uh, administration of Columbus's longest serving uh, and uh, first and only uh, black mayor, uh, Michael B. Coleman. And uh, mm -hmm. during those uh, 17 some odd years, I uh, continued on that trail, right? And um, had the pleasure of working in economic development, had the pleasure of working um, um, in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And some of my um, uh, most, the moments that I'm most proud of uh, were when I had an opportunity to promote um, and elevate uh, Black women. Um, Goldman Sachs, um, I don't know if you guys heard here recently, Goldman Sachs just announced a $10 billion um, effort mm -hmm. um, over the next 10 years, um, you know, basically to do what we all been doing, right? Elevating and empower Black women. Um, and they actually came out and they, um, said that their research has shown that one of the fastest ways to accelerate change and effectively begin to address the racial wealth gap is to listen and invest in Black women. Hmm. Sitting, at that, sitting at that intersection, I'm going to need a I'm going to need one of those. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to need that. I'm going to need a whole that. bunch of them gem drops. Yeah. Like, drop those. <laughs> <laughs> Well-deserved gem drops. <laughs> so, um, it's that intersectionality, right? It's Black women sitting at the intersectionality of racism and sexism that um, makes our lives so vulnerable. But yet, Black women have created, of new net businesses, the American Express uh, State of Women Owned Businesses tells us that Black women have created 41% of new net businesses. We pull weight uh, for small business development at three times our population, mm -hmm. right? However, we don't get what we need. We don't get the tools. We don't get the access to capital. We don't get the, 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 the exposure to the business know-how. We create, you know, Black women are some of the most creative. Black and brown women are some of the most creative human beings on the face of the earth. We will sit at our kitchen table and make a business. Right? I mean, because that's what we do, right? Because that's what we have to do. We gotta take our babies, we gotta take our men, we gotta take our parents, <laughs> and we gotta go to work and we gotta create businesses, right? So the Women's Center for Economic Opportunity was founded in order to support women who are in that struggle. We do not want to glorify problems. We want to illuminate mm. solutions. And we want to be mm. able to provide them with the tools that they need in order to create wealth. And now we are turning our attention to helping them create jobs. That is the way to create generational wealth, the way to close wealth gaps, mm. and Drop the it. way to really express our agency. So. Um, my zone of genius has always been um, more of a broad-based uh, approach to enabling and uh, mm -hmm. providing. The, if I, I guess if anything, I would probably have, have been a teacher if I wasn't a public administrator, um, but uh, providing this platform that is now focused on um, making sure that uh, the knowledge that Will has and the energy that Maurice has and the, 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 the vision that Shanice has, and as well as the knowledge that Doug has as far as how to connect the dots and that you have, Kevin, for bringing people together, that we have a hub 
that allows black women and brown women to come to one place mm -hmm. and be able mm -hmm. to access those things in order to leverage their own zone of genius, make money and create. Say it. Jobs. Say so it. That's what we're doing. And that's what the wow. High Growth Accelerator is all about. We're turning our attention to high growth industries. Um, we mm -hmm. want mm -hmm. um, uh, African-American and um, uh, Latinas to understand the businesses that are um, um, that they can create in tech, tech enabled, STEM based businesses, biomedical, um, um, engineering, Maurice mentioned, transportation, utilities. I'll just give you one more um, example. Um, uh, one third of African American businesses are created in the healthcare space. That's what the research tells us. Hmm. Fifty-four percent of that, and, and and I'll say healthcare and social um, uh, sector, right? Um, okay. Fifty-four percent of that one third um, are created by um, African American women. Yet, African American women-owned businesses. Um, and we learned this through our COVID survey. So another organization that I founded is called the Alliance, co-founded is the Alliance for Black Business Women and Entrepreneurs. And we did a COVID uh, business impact survey. It showed mm -hmm. us that of uh, all the women, we had 250 some odd women who took this um, survey um, across the state. 60% um, of them make less than $50,000 a year because their businesses are in low growth industries. Mm. So if we can take that 54% that are in the healthcare social service space, expose them to higher growth in the higher growth possibilities of biomedical um, um, and other technology or technology enabled businesses in that same space, just think about the possibilities of what we could create when it comes to wealth um, and jobs for our communities. And I'll leave you with this one last point. Black people hire black people. And so when uh -oh. we have what? black people <laughs> creating jobs, then we can get our young people off the streets and we can make sure that our communities are more vibrant, safer, and our quality of Come life on. will improve. We have to create jobs for our people. We have to create jobs for our young people. And that's, what we, that's what we wanna do with the, and it's higher one, H-I-R-E one. So we're, been, mm. we're gonna build an accelerator uh, post pandemic to position uh, black and brown women to hire one at least. Mm. Powerful, y'all. You know yes, you may. Is, well, we, by the way, we're, we're opening it up at this point. So go ahead, Doug. <laughs> I just wanna tag in on that last point because that's what I was saying as well in terms of talking to companies about hiring black people. We can do that all day and night. If they, if, they, if they hired a bunch more, if they did, if they met all of their goals, you couldn't hire all of us that are available and talented and available. We're going to have to do this ourselves. And we can't hire people mm. if we don't start businesses. So Kina, I am, mm. I am so right there with you. And I want to throw some, some uh, support there behind that. Black women are founders and have been founders and CEOs of of companies which are not heading to IPO, they're not heading to seven figure uh, exits and things like that. But they're being founded and they're being led. And some wow. of us have, a, especially black men, have a lot of power and capability. We are in position to support these black women owned, led, founded companies and begin to do the kind of mergers and acquisitions in our ecosystem that can lead to the IPOs the seven figure exits and those kinds of things. So I want you to know, Kina, that that we got your back and and you keep on churning out women CEOs and we will churn out the talent and 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 some of the other economic resources to help push that along because that's the formula. 
That is the point. You're already mm -hmm. doing the founding of these companies. I love being a CEO. I continue to want to found these companies, but we also need to corral that talent and make it available and energize for the kind of founding that, that you're talking about, I believe. Yeah, you know what? Can I, can I tap into that real quick? Oh yeah. You said something um, so awesome. The uh, I love the shift into high growth industry, right? I think we, as we look to build, you know, this ecosystem, which is so desperately needed where we can support and sustain ourselves and harness our own economic power and, and wield that like a weapon, right? The, uh, there's an opportunity in, in the way that our society is evolving as a result of technology, right? So if we're intentional about mm -hmm. looking for those spaces to play and tailoring our uh, businesses and our efforts towards these gaps, then you're already halfway there. You know what I mean? So if we're going for energy jobs or infrastructure jobs, or if you're in healthcare, if we're more intentional about, you know, the transition to, you know, uh, digital digitized records or, you know, streamlined ways to do procedures or telemedicine, like there's a lot of spaces that seem like uh, they're intimidating, but they're not, right? They're, it's just something different. You know what I mean? It's still the same application, same problem solving, but the difference is you're walking into a market, you know, that, that is a trillion dollar market versus a million dollar market, right? So um, I, I love that. I, I, we have to be very intentional as we go to build this thing about plugging ourselves into spaces and trends that are already primed for growth, right? Like the gig economy, for example, we're building an appetite for hiring people by the hour, you know what I mean? Or in, in micro ways, mm -hmm. really effective, but you can stack money really quickly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, love that, love that. Dropping some gems there, y'all, pay attention. Can I, can I so go ahead. Okay, yeah. um, so just kind of taking a peek at the panel, obviously I'm the, the millennial <laughs> of this panel. <laughs> Listen, I have no issues Talking stating about. my age. I am 31. <laughs> so as you guys are teaching the people, you're teaching me too, because I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm 20 years in, I'm 15 years in. I'm like, well, I'm only a month in <laughs> into this whole realm. But I had a conversation with somebody who owns a, a master black mastermind group, and she dropped a statistic on me. And she told me that, and this was like a couple months back before I even launched Lotus. She said that 95% of African American businesses do not hire their own or don't have any employees to, um, to be able to provide jobs. I didn't know how I was going to do it. And I spoke on it a month before and I said, you know what? I a thousand black and brown people this year right didn't know how I was going to do it I launched my uh my app and partner with my mother because she's actually um she has her own staffing agency and she's been doing this for well over 20 years and now we're in a position where we're able to provide remote jobs for our people I mean we have thousands of open positions and not only that we're helping building resumes so if you don't have a resume or if you don't even have customer service skills my mom is training these people. We have trainees who've been doing working with her for over 15 years. And we have a job readiness program to teach our underprivileged people how to attain jobs. And just kind of going back, and I'm going to be brief. I remember as a kid sitting in my mom's training session and she had like 30 people um, in this training session. And she had a system where they were, she was teaching the people how to type. I learned how to type 33 words per minute, just being a kid swinging my legs on the damn board, what do I do now? You know, I kind of watched my mom, you know, take people from what we call the hood or under or disenfranchised communities and build their confidence, build them up to be able to walk into the corporate world and attain a job. So now it's like kind of like I'm taking over that legacy. And you know, it, to me, I, I'm getting chills. I also kind of want to piggyback off when I heard uh, Mary McLeod Bethune. Well, a woman who inspired me was somebody that no one talks about. Hairstylist, and, and she had her own hair care line. But then she grew so large to where she had, uh, play, she had colleges 
in the in, in the nations at every single state she had colleges that not only provided and taught women how to uh do hair and and, and become women but she taught them how to save money how to attain uh land um i mean she had a, a A, a parking garage she, I mean a hotel so that's what inspired me to to build out this mixed use development so I can say now that you guys I mean I, I'm excited to be here but I'm not gonna lie I'm exhausted because <laughs> it's it's a lot to try to change a 400 year old mentality and 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 the dependency of our people to switch their mindsets and another little nugget I want to drop is, you know, we got a lot of genius people sitting here, but what I've noticed from our past leaders, their basis and their foundation was spirituality. So now I have to go back and teach the art of manifestation, um, the art of, um, you know, uh, grounding yourself in, in, in the divine to be able to catapult whatever you have to, to bring it to life. And um, mm -hmm. I'm excited, I'm, and I thank you guys for nice. for dropping these nuggets. Nice. Like I said, as you guys are, I, even though I'm a panelist, I'm still learning. <laughs> still learning. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. how that's how it works. Go ahead, Maurice. No, I I agree, man. I, I, like you said, Shanice, it is hard, right? And that's why it's important that we create a ecosystem, right? So the ecosystem puts in place all of the quote unquote nutritional things that you need. It creates a pathway for you to go from point A to point B to point C. And it creates what I think is probably most important, that community, right? So we're here on this panel, but as people come in, if they're intimidated, they know that they have a community of quote unquote elders who've gone through that, who can um, you know, empower them, help them kind of uh, jump over some of the mistakes that maybe we've, we've made but that, that, that is um, created by this ecosystem. And I, I think that's why it's very important that, you know, um, Kevin, that we have this, uh, this discussion, then also start to put a system in place that people can kind of plug into, they can leverage and, and get access to as well. And that will hopefully increase the number of people who are successful at the end of the day, because it is a hard role. Entrepreneurship for any race is hard, is doubly hard for us and we definitely need a system that will make that that whole uh, journey a lot easier. Outstanding, outstanding. Thank you, Maurice, for wrapping that piece up. And that that is exactly why the ecosystem is so important. So we are we're getting close to wrapping up. Uh, we're running out of time in a very powerful and heavy, deep discussion. So anybody that's watching this, right? Whether you're watching it live right now, later on today, this weekend, next week, next month, next year, you need to share this. This is a powerful message that's gonna impact somebody and change their entire trajectory in life, right? Don't take this knowledge, which is why Maurice created Wakanda, right? Don't take this knowledge and just let it sit. You wanna share this information and others need to hear it. So with that being said, there is a question that came from my audience and I wanna see if anybody wants to, to, to answer this and then we'll go into wrap up around how people can get in contact with you, support what you have going on. It says, how can we establish institutions to educate entrepreneurs on these high growth industries. And I think it's going back to when Kena was talking about it and Will talked about it and Doug talked about it. So anybody want to jump on that question and uh, and answer that? Hey, Kevin, I'll, I'll, I'll give a couple brief things because uh, I think we all represent some of those organizations. Uh, we co-founded Black Tech Columbus to help educate people about high growth technology industries, how you can get careers in and the networking and mentoring necessary for people to access that. Um, Color-Coded Lab sits within multiple verticals of a black and brown ecosystem, which also includes venture suites. It includes an uh, organization called Venture Combine uh, and, and uh, it, it, a fund. And so we are creating actual physical institutions with a building, with a place that you can go and even a bit like this to educate mm -hmm. ourselves specifically around high growth, technology-enabled uh, industries such like that so I, I think we're at the beginning of it we haven't seen the results of it yet um but count on these institutions that you've seen represented here i think shanice's work that she has just talked about with the ecosystem that she is putting together that is such an inter um uh, uh institution and i think what kina is talking about i don't want to steal your thunder kina but in terms of woman ceo uh is such an institution this is where we gather 
we connect with each other. And and Shanice, I'll say that we are also learning from each other. So you're not the only one, and I'm learning from you as well. So so I do think that they're coming, uh, and they're almost here. And there have been some that are quietly been operating, and we need to put a little energy and resources behind those as well. Awesome, just, awesome. Uh, Thank you, Doug. Go ahead, Kena. I just want to piggyback on what Doug is saying. I couldn't agree more. Um, what everybody um, represents on this call are assets, um, ecosystem assets. Um, and that's what institutions are. So uh, whether you are um, part of um, Venture Suites, um, you are uh, have joined Wakanda, uh, you are a member of the Women's Center for Economic Opportunity or the Alliance for Black Business Women and Entrepreneurs, or you had the pleasure of uh, knowing Will and his virtual reality. And I pick on that one because that's where I met him. Um, uh, just an amazing, amazing experience um, and what he's working on. Um, I would say one of the ways that we can build them is to support them with our dollars. Mm -hmm. Another way that we have to, uh, we can uh -oh. build them is by making sure that when we have an opportunity to lift them up, that we're doing mm -hmm. that. Um, and the last way I think is to, especially if you're working at um, a corporation or um, even government is to ask the question mm. to your bosses and others, elected officials and CEOs. After George Floyd, and as we move through this pandemic, but we'll talk about, you know, after George Floyd, there was a lot of um, um, good intentions mm -hmm. and a great spirit around uh, racial equity, um, as well as uh, closing wealth gaps. Um, and there's been a lot of training that has gone on um, um, and a lot of development. I think now we have to raise the question, what are you doing? Where are, where are the dollars going? Uh, part of the Black ecosystem, we have some great assets like the Columbus Urban League, um, which is doing a phenomenal job of um, assisting mm -hmm. um, all manner of folk uh, during this pandemic, including business people. So I just want to lift up what um, um, they, what uh, Stephanie and Melinda Carter and Avery and all of those folks um, are doing over at the Columbus Urban League. Um, um, and I think that, you know, we want to hear um, that, yes, we are investing um, and in the Columbus Urban Leagues of the world, um, as well as asking about how we are supporting a build out of uh, this ecosystem um, that we're talking about. So um, ask the question, uh, beg the question, raise the question about, um, I think that just goes back to kind of accountability, yeah. right? Um, when we talk about um, uh, specifically a post George Floyd kind of um, um, sentiment or po post George Floyd intentions, about what uh, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025 would look like as compared to 2020, right? So just want to shout out, you know, some of those folks, Columbus Urban League, Venture Suites. Um, I know I'm missing somebody, Kevin, help me. Uh, you know, Franklin County has done an amazing job, Absolutely. City of Columbus. You know, there are yep. folks out City here Council. that are really pushing yeah, that yeah. message. Definitely, definitely. So, so here's the deal, y'all. We are, we are literally basically out of time. So what we're doing is we're going into overtime. And in overtime, what I'm going to ask you guys to do is to do your wrap up. So what that is, is in 60 seconds or so, if there was one more bit of knowledge you wanted to share, if it was something that you didn't get to talk about on the show today that you said, hey, when I go on this, I want to make sure I share this. And you're like, ah, I forgot. We don't want you to forget, right? So this is your opportunity to drop that. And with that as well, if people want to reach out to you or your organization, would you drop the domain or contact info? So do your wrap up 
And Keenan, we're going to wrap up with you. We're going to let you kick that off, right? You kick off earlier. Would you wrap us up with your, uh, your, your last tidbits, words of wisdom, anything you may have forgotten and how people get in contact with you? Oh, I'll be brief. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I just am um, <laughs> so blessed to be part of this ecosystem that we're building out. It's going to be amazing. It is already amazing. Amazing uh, personalities, amazing goals, um, uh, doing great things for the folks in uh, the Franklin County, Columbus area. Um, if you want to reach out to me um, about anything, um, my email address is Kina at women's CEO, and that's women's with an S, um, and Kina is K-E-E-N-A. Outstanding, thank you so much for that wrap up. And Maurice, we're coming to you next. Yeah, so just as a, as a wrap up, man, start, right? I've talked mm. to so many people who sit around just thinking about what they wanna do. Just start it, man. And, and, and don't let the, the perfect be the enemy of the good, right? So again, I'm an engineer, so I know the value of a prototype. It doesn't have to be the finished product before you launch it. In fact, if you if it's perfect when you launch it, it's too late, right? So, uh, so just start, right? And start experimenting, figuring out. You have a thesis, figure it out, see if it actually works, right? That's important. And uh, you, I can be reached at hello at wakanda.app. Um, again, I would love if you join that. I'm building what I call a collective intelligence, a collective super intelligence of black mm -hmm. folk, right? So we're aggregating black brilliance. Uh, we have accounts there, free account. I uh, got a $5 account too. So like Kina said, uh, the, the dollars help. So if you could do yes. that as well. Um, and again, if you have questions, we have a Q&A form on there. I'd be happy to jump in. We have a community of, of black experts who can also help in many different areas. So I'd love to see you on Wakanda. Outstanding, outstanding. Now, just to be clear, so for Wakanda, right, uh, in the, the domain, you said hello at, can you spell Wakanda for them so they, they yeah. have it right? Wakanda is W-O-K-A-N-D-A dot app. So my email right. address is hello at Wakanda dot app. Uh, the, the URL is Wakanda dot app. Outstanding, outstanding. And remember, y'all, you can be a member. You can also be a speaker. He's looking for both. So that's how you support his uh, his platform, right? Doug, we're coming to you for your final wrap up. Thanks, Kevin. This has been awesome. Uh, wonderful to talk with everybody. Uh, Color Coded Labs can be reached at colorcodedlabs.com. Uh, I'm Doug at colorcodedlabs.com. Uh, Black Tech Columbus can be reached at blacktech614.com. Uh, I, I tweet a lot. You find me at Doug IT Pro. Um, very active on LinkedIn. Seriously, seriously, as Maurice says, go look at Wokanda. Go do it. Hey, this is a platform. We don't need to complain about we don't have one. We have one. Okay. It's, it's serious. This is a solid platform. And I just want to take a, a, a moment to raise up, uh, if I could, uh, stopping Asian hate. Uh, because during the protest of last summer, a lot of Asian Americans raised their voice, joined into the chorus and said, yeah, we're not with this. They did that. And they yep. believe that. And we come from a people who have had our churches bombed and our children killed and we've been strung up by trees. We understand this violence. Black people, join in the chorus, raise your voices. This is not okay. And when we right. see it happening to them, we need to raise our voices. So since there's a, a black audience here, I wanna make sure if any Asian Americans are watching, we hear you, we feel you, we understand this and we are not okay with this. So we're, we're fighting this all. along with you. Yeah, totally unacceptable, Doug. Thank you for bringing that up because it is that serious. And Shanice, with you being in, in the state of Georgia, we also are supporting, we need to support what's going on down in Georgia or not support what's going on in Georgia, but support those that are fighting against the challenges that are going on in Georgia right now as our democracy is at risk, right? So uh, thank you for bringing that up, Doug, because it's very serious as well. And then with that being said, we're gonna go to you, Will. Yeah, thanks again for having me. I'm, I love this conversation. I believe in entrepreneurship. You know, it's the art of making the impossible possible, right? And, and I think what uh, society has shown us is that uh, if we are ever going to, uh, uh, you know, get to where we all know that we should be or want to be, uh, we have to do this through entrepreneurship. There's no other way. And, and we have to help ourselves. There is no other way. Right. So, um, you know, I, I would challenge all of you that are really interested in this route. Find something that you're passionate about. Sell me a pen. Right. Like figure it out. You know, just go get in there 
and start jotting down on a spreadsheet. One of the one of the best motivators, pull out Excel and just do some quick pro forma math on how much money you think you could make on your idea and then let that motivate you. Get through that exercise and then go to Kina and then go to Doug because then they can plug you into the resources, but you're already there. This isn't like a passive game. You have to own this and you have to be passionate mm. about it because it's going to drag you through the mud, right? But if you do it, you know, you can come out on top and you can help a lot of people, right? Mm. So, you know, the, the one thing I would say uh, that I end all my presentations with now, ironically, is a quote by Malcolm X uh, that I think applies to technology, which is that uh, uh, tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. So get out there, you know, read, right? Look at what's going on in the world. Look for those holes. Think of a way to solve a problem in it and go get it. Outstanding. Outstanding. How do people reach out to you at uh, Modern Technologies if they have a question? Um, you can find me on uh, LinkedIn, actually, Will Burris, uh, you know, hit me on Labor Genome. If you take that assessment, I'll see you coming through there. But uh, and Modern Technologies is always there. It's in a it's in an in-between state right now. So I think LinkedIn is the safest place. Hey, can I plug one more thing, too? With Lower Com, again, we're growing like a weed right now, and I am looking for really good tech talent. So if you are, uh, you know, looking for a tech job in a company that is super stable but feels like a startup, then find me on LinkedIn and, and let's talk about it. That's outstanding, outstanding opportunity presenting itself for you right there, y'all. And it's B-U-R-R-U-S, all right? That's how it spells his last name. Thank you so much, Will, for being on the show. And Shanice, would you bring us home? Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and take it home and uh, kind of tie in everything that everybody has stated here with, um, with execution problems of the world. We've been understanding social media going on and like Maurice always execute. So what my platform is doing is, is, is executing. It's bringing everybody that's here, um, Doug, Maurice, Kina, Will, Kevin, and bringing those resources under one hub. So that way, when you go to lotus.org and lotus is L-O-A-D-U-S.org, you can see and learn how to connect with Kina. You, the, my, the Wakanda platform will be on there. Uh, whatever Will has will be on there. The Black Tech um, Columbus and um, will be on my Lotus platform as well. And uh, uh, the uh, columbusblack.com will be all integrated into Lotus. So as we, as we know, my platform is a crowdsourcing uh, platform, which like I said, it helps bring all the sources together for that one hub. So that to also answer the question of um, how do we establish institutions to educate entrepreneurs for these high growth industries? Well, come to Lotus and you'll find out because we're going to have everybody on there. Um, we're going to be able to provide jobs, uh, health and wellness, uh, teach you how to save money. Um, we're going to have different CPAs on, on there teaching you how to uh, allocate your money properly when you do get money. Um, and it's important now. And like I said, for e execution reasons, yes, I do believe bringing awareness and marching and all that good stuff is good. But now we're in a different mm. era. We're in an era now where we have to move. There's no more, I don't wanna go out there and march. Now that's everybody's ministry. My ministry is to find a viable solution to help us sustain, to carry us through generations to, for, for the future and for our, for my grandchildren. I'm not thinking about my child. I'm thinking about her children mm. and I'm only 31 and my child's 11. Mm. So as you know, I'm <laughs> thinking 20, 30, 40 years from now, building a platform that can stand the test of time. And like Will said, we need something that is going to, um, that's going to assist our people because we all we got right now, right? So my platform is not free, unfortunately. I can't afford to make it free. However, I've put my hard uh, blood, sweat and tears into this, but you know, I am a startup and guaranteed as I grow, it is built to scale. So there's gonna be way more. And when you look at it now, just know that, you know, even a year from now, Lotus will not look the way it looks now. So I just wanna say thank you for having me on this platform. Um, I wasn't a hundred percent prepared to speak, <laughs> but I'm glad that, you know, I, I embodied the energy and the spirit to be able to hopefully transmit some positivity to everybody who's watching me and 
to let you guys know and leave you with encouragement is to now we are in the execution period of life. This is this era and technology is going to help us be able to patch that all in and bridge that wealth gap. All right. All right. All right. Mad gems being dropped. And yes, it's nine dollars and ninety nine cents per month. And, and Maurice's was five dollars on his low end. Right. So. No reason why you all can't support these platforms, support the entrepreneurship. You have programs that uh, entrepreneur support organizations on this call to help you. Um, we have masterminds on this call. Um, so listen, at the end of the day, y'all, execute, 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 right? Is what we heard over and over again. It starts with taking that first step, right? It doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to start. Then you have to execute upon your vision and get it done and leverage all the resources, all the relationships, all the knowledge around you. And we talk about access to capital, but it starts with access to relationships that can get you to the capital as well, all right? So with that being said, y'all, another episode of the Beco system, y'all understand now why this ecosystem is so important for us to work together, help each other, spread the word. I need y'all to hit that share button. That's the one thing I need everybody to do. When you watch this, just share it somebody needs to hear it all right and with that being said check us out at columbusblack.com for all of our episodes make sure you join our mailing list so you don't miss out on anything else follow us on social that's facebook instagram twitter and youtube right we're on youtube we have some great comments on youtube so make sure you check that out as well and with that being said i want to thank my panelists y'all have done an amazing job of dropping nothing but gems one after another i have had some exercise because i've been dropping these arms from all the gems y'all have been dropping. So I appreciate each of you. And on that note, y'all, just remember this. In order to be more successful in your future, you need to understand a little bit more about your past. That's why I thank y'all for joining us for the Beco system. And I hope y'all had a blast. And on that note, 